If I wanted to become a machine learning engineer again, this is the exact process I would follow. I've said it before, but a machine learning engineer is not exactly an entry level position. This is because you need such a wide range of skills like maths, stats, machine learning, software engineering, DevOps, cloud systems. There's just so much knowledge you need across the board. You certainly don't need to be an expert in all of them, but you should have a really good understanding across most of these areas. And it's because of this really wide skill set that makes machine learning engineers the highest paid tech profession nowadays. According to Levels FYI, the average salaries in the UK are machine learning engineer, about 94K, AI researcher, 83K, AI engineer, 75K, data scientist, 71K, software engineer, 83K, and data engineer, around 69k. It's important to mention that Levels FYI has only large tech companies pretty much on the website. So these companies often pay more, so these averages are slightly skewed. But anyway, it does go to show you that machine learning engineers are the highest paid tech profession, at least according to this source. Now, with all this in mind, that's not to say that you literally can't get a machine learning engineer job out of university. It's just very rare and I've hardly seen it. If you have the right background, like a master's or PhD in CS, maths, with a really good focus on AI, you probably can land a general machine learning job out of university. But that's a very niche kind of group of people that can actually do that. That's why for the majority of people, I recommend you become either a software engineer or a data scientist first for at least a few years, then look to pivot to become a machine learning engineer. This is exactly what I did. I was a data scientist for about three and a half years, and over that time, I developed my deployment skills, machine learning skills, and eventually made the move to become a machine learning engineer. Whether you become a data scientist or software engineer first really depends on what you're interested in, your background, and essentially what is the easiest route for you. If you take the advice from Greg Brockman, who is the OpenAI CTO, he recommends becoming a software engineer first. But like I said, either option is pretty much fine. So decide which role is best for you and try and land a job in that area. There are so many software engineering and data scientist roadmaps out there on the internet, so I'm not gonna go over that in this video. But if you're interested in a data scientist roadmap, I'll link on screen here a couple of videos I made around a year ago that will detail all the things you need to know to become a data scientist. Once you have that job as a data scientist or software engineer, your next goal should be looking to develop your machine learning knowledge and how to deploy machine learning models into production. If the company you're currently at has a machine learning department or a team that uses machine learning, your best bet is to try and gain to work on those projects. For example, a friend of mine, Armin Konka, who runs his own newsletter called The AI Engineer, which I highly recommend you check out, transitioned from being a software engineer at TikTok to working at Microsoft AI. According to his newsletter, at TikTok, I worked on TikTok shop where I collaborated closely with the algorithm team, including ML engineers and data scientists working on the For You page recommendation engine. This experience ultimately helped me transition into AI full-time at Microsoft. Now, this is an example of an engineer who worked in, well, software engineering, and eventually worked in a team around machine learning AI, and he used that skill set to transition to being a full-time AI engineer or software AI engineer at Microsoft. So this is how you become a software engineer to an AI or machine learning engineer, basically. However, for me, it was the other way around. I went from being a data scientist to an ML engineer. And the way I did this is basically, I was working on models, but I wasn't shipping them to production. So I asked my manager, essentially, can I just work closely with the engineers or even just try and deploy things by myself? So as a data scientist, I would build the models and I would then independently learn the skills and work closely with the engineers to effectively deploy them to production. It was hard because a lot of this was upskilling myself in basically software engineering, which is something I didn't have too much familiarity with at the beginning. But over time, my knowledge compounded and eventually I was able to deploy my models end to end pretty much independently with some help from the software engineers. And at the end of my previous job, I was basically shipping all my model improvements pretty much independently. So I was basically being an ML engineer already in my previous company without the title in a formality. So my main advice is basically speak to your manager and express your interest in wanting to work on machine learning projects at your current company. In most cases, your manager and company will be very accommodating to this request, even if it may take you a few months to get onto the project. Even better, if you can, try to move to a team that focuses on a machine learning product because you'll be around machine learning, AI, 
every single day. And that's something you will learn just through osmosis about how these models really work. This relates to my previous point, but like I said earlier, machine learning engineers need a really large knowledge remit. So you have to make sure that you upskill yourself in the areas that you're weaker on. If you are a data scientist, you're probably weaker on things like software engineering, DevOps, and cloud systems. If you're a software engineer, you're probably weaker on maths, stats, and machine learning theory. This is just the general vibe. It may be different for your case. The point is, find areas of the machine learning job description that you don't know too well and make an effort to learn those and upskill your knowledge. As I said in my previous point, the best way to acquire these new skills is to basically work on projects in your current role. However, if this is not possible or if you really want to expedite your learning process, then you're just going to have to study outside of hours. I know some people may not like that, but I mean, if you want to get a job in the highest paying tech profession, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. This is what I did and I started writing technical blogs on software engineering data structure and algorithms, and essentially how to write production code as a data scientist. So I put in a time outside of my work hours to really improve my abilities to become a better software engineer because I was already having that good kind of machine learning knowledge from my data science job. However, if I was going to upskill myself in the skills needed to become a machine learning engineer again, I would use DataCamp's machine learning engineer track who are kindly sponsoring this video. I am excited to tell you more about this course. This comprehensive track assumes you have the prerequisite data science knowledge and builds on that to teach you the engineering and deployment skills needed to send your models to production. It's 44 hours of interactive content that upskill you on things like containerization, model monitoring, CICD, MLflow, writing production code, and so much more. All of these took me about a year to learn on the job, but you can access them in just 44 hours. The reason why I really recommend DataCamp is their learning experience. DataCamp really makes you learn through short videos followed by hands-on tutorials. The track contains two projects to practice your MLOps and engineering skills so you get real hands-on experience and also have some projects that you can showcase in your CV to prospective employers. I highly recommend this track and I'll leave it linked in the description below and also the data science one in case you're also interested in checking that one out. One thing that really helped me was to develop a specialism inside machine learning. In my previous job, I was a data scientist specializing in time series forecasting and optimization problems. And I've landed now a job as an ML engineer who specializes in optimization and classical machine learning. Now, I definitely wouldn't have got this role if I didn't have that really good optimization theoretical knowledge for my previous job. I essentially had a deeper understanding of optimization than the average tech person, and now it's basically my edge for getting this ML engineer role. This is very common because, like I said, a machine learning engineer is not an entry-level position, and normally what you find is that if you're an ML engineer in a large company, you're typically aligned to a certain specialism. So in my opinion, if you know one or two areas in machine learning to a really good depth, that will significantly boost your chances of getting that first job in the field. In Armand's case, he knew recommendation systems pretty well and also understood how to deploy them end-to-end -end at large scale. He even said so in his newsletter. This work gave me first-hand experience with large-scale recommendation systems, AI-driven ranking and personalization, end-to-end -end ML deployment pipelines. So I recommend trying to work in a team that specializes in a certain machine learning area. But to be honest, this is pretty much a given because this is how most machine learning teams work in large companies. If you can't work on a machine learning project inside your current company, then you're gonna to have to invest some time outside of hours again. I always recommend learning the fundamentals first to a really good level because they're important for pretty much any machine learning job. But after that, you're going to think about the areas you really want to specialize in and start developing some deep knowledge. Here is an exhaustive list of all the machine learning specialisms that you may want to choose. NLP and LLMs, computer vision, reinforcement learning, time series forecasting, anomaly detection, recommendation systems, speech recognition and processing, optimization, quantitative financial analysis, deep learning, bioinformatics, econometrics and geospatial analysis. Again, there's loads on that list, but in my opinion, all you need to do is pick two to three, and that should be your baseline. But to be honest, if you're going for your first machine learning engineer role, then it's kind of hard to learn two to three to a really good understanding, because that takes years. 
So I recommend learning the fundamentals and then choose one specialism that there is sufficient demand in the market for and hone in on that. And that's kind of the most efficient use of your time. And after you get your first role as a machine learning engineer, you can then learn some other specialisms on the side to diversify your skill set. If you want to learn more about specializing in machine learning, then I have a whole video on the topic, which I'll link on screen here and also in the description below. In tech companies, it is often said that to get promoted, you have to demonstrate to be working at that high level for at least three to six months. Now, in my opinion, the same is true for becoming a machine learning engineer. If you are a data scientist or software engineer, then you should try your hardest to operate as a machine learning engineer at your current company, even if you haven't got that title. I mean, who knows? They may even change your title to become a machine learning engineer and offer you that job at the current company if you're operating like one already. I have heard this happen before and it's probably the best way of becoming one. To be honest, what I'm really getting at here, it's kind of changing the frame and the way you view yourself as a professional, right? You basically want to think of yourself as a machine learning engineer. Now, I'm not talking about just manifesting it, but actually act like one. So own production deployment models, build models, you know, write the code for like basically try and be a machine learning engineer already because that's the best way of actually kind of getting that identity, which makes it easier for you to apply to roles because you have that confidence and that skill set already in your current role, even if you haven't got that title. Because what you really want to do is that if you do apply for a machine learning engineering job, you basically want to say, I already am working as a machine learning engineer pretty much in my current role. This is what I did. And to be honest, the rest is history, as they say. If you are more machine learning advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Dictionary Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing machine learning engineer. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out.